Honorable Malim. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Yesterday, the president of the GNU spent a considerable time saying that our input and contribution during opening of parliament debate was playing the man and not playing the ball. The president wrongly said that we previously insulted him by saying he, that his father was a police officer during the dark days of apartheid and that even when such is a fact, he is proud that his father was a law enforcement officer of apartheid laws. Let's put the facts right in front of this parliament. We never ever have made any reference to President's father in this parliament, and even if we did, it would have been a statement of fact and not insult. To say someone's parent is a nurse, it will never be used as an insult. To say someone else's parents is a police officer can never be used as an insult. You said, I said, spoke about your father in order for you to drag my grandmother and fail you because my grandmother has got nothing to do with what I'm doing here. So I want to state it very clear that President, we respect each other and will continue to engage each other robustly. Secondly, parliament and political work in general is not for soft-skinned people who will use all languages to complain whenever we give fair but robust and direct characterization of their political conduct. Here we speak truth and nothing else but the truth. In our characterization of the ball which you spoke about here, we must, which you said we must play, we will also characterize the players to have a fuller picture of both subjective and objective political and ideological conditions. You can never only play the ball without understanding the strengths and weaknesses of the player. We also, we will also welcome, and this we did at a number of times, we welcomed and tolerated whosoever does that against us. When we get criticized by your side, even sometimes the political, am political amateurs like Butima Namel, who come and attack us personally, we never respond to them. We never cry because we are not crybabies. We fight because we are fighters. Instead of crying, we fight. In politics, the individual's personal character is key to historical developments. Otherwise, why is there Nelson Mandela Day? The individual strength of Mandela is what we are drawn to reflect upon, learn from him as a leader, but more broadly as a human being. It is a fact that in light of the government of national unity, which originate from the white capitalist establishments, we needed to appreciate your own historical involvement with these white people. And a close attention to your personal political journey gives testament to the su suspicion that this government was not actually created now. It came from long time ago because you were made a project long time ago. When we say you did not go to Robben Island when your peers went to Robben Island, how can that be an insult? When we say you wrote a letter and said they planted communist ideas in your head to the police, how can that be an insult? To tell the truth is the greatest respect we give to a sitting president. It is a constitutional requirement that Honorable you must Malema. be held accountable, scrutinized you there is a about the order. decisions you make. Please take your seat. There is a point of order. Honorable Lakudi. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker. Honorable Members, order. I cannot hear the Speaker. Honorable Deputy Speaker, 
I am standing on a point of order based on what the Honorable Malima said. Ru Rule number 92. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Honorable Malema referred to the President as a project, meaning that the President is acting on behalf of other people. So that is unparliamentary and it cannot be accepted. Thank you. Honorable Members, uh, I have listened to what the Honorable Malema has said. And I think that we do have to have robust debate, so I'm not going to sustain that point of order. Please proceed. But to tell you, to tell you the truth is the greatest respect we give to a sitting president. It is a constitutional requirement that you must be held accountable, scrutinized about the decisions you make. Thirdly, we have read and will never argue with you when you say we must read more books about NUM. Reading is a very nice thing to do. There are many books that we have read in relation to the formation of NUM. And we want to state very clear here that you read and called names of individuals who formed the NUM which we say it was a project of the Oppenheimers. These individuals are all flourishing with you um, being a billionaire, yet the mine, mine workers' conditions continue to be worse. How do you form a union to go and save the workers, but the people who formed the union themselves are the ones who are succeeding, yet the mine workers are struggling? Mine workers in South Africa constitute to be the most exploited section of the working class in South Africa. Mine workers continue to be the most underpaid workers in South Africa compared to the amount of wealth they extract from beneath our soil. Mine workers continue to stay in horrible conditions and informal settlement without water, roads, toilets, and without basic necessities. Mine workers continue to be the biggest victims of loan sharks and with the biggest loan shark being Capitec. Mine workers continue to perish in occupational accidents. Solomon Nyerenda, Yvonne Mnis, and Preeti Wini Nkambule are still trapped inside a container in Lily Mine after the accident that happened in 2016, eight years ago. Mine workers continue to live in communities defined by high levels of crime. When the mine workers protested for a minimum wage of 12,500 per month in Marikana 12 years ago. You, as a director and a shareholder of London Mine, you did not take the side of the workers. You called for concomitant action, and 34 workers were massacred by the ANC government in Marikana. If you formed the union for these workers, why is the conditions remaining the way they are? The union was formed to suppress those workers. The conditions of mine workers in South Africa is applicable to many other categories of workers in South Africa. A lot of workers in South Africa live in absolute poverty, and there is no hope that their condition will change under Ghana. If the history and fiction that you tell about the NUM and mine workers is anything to believe, why are mine workers still trapped in the condition they find themselves in today? Mr. President, it is, most a, it is almost a year since you went to Amman Skral in June 2023 to admit to the people that you failed them after 31 people died after the cholera outbreak. To, to this day, the people of Amman Skral still do not have clean, drinkable water. How can the president go into a place and find a crisis? And when he comes out of that place, the crisis remains. It doesn't only remain, it becomes worse. President, you went to Alexander and promised people one million houses. When we remind you that you promised people one million houses, 
you are going to say it's an insult. It's not an insult. Kinit. Little Maile Lobu Jaba to Maka, Bama Alexander, Lar Letaba for one million houses. Le Mamotale, Len Treti Yali Shidi Shidi, Asanga Ya Rariwa, after we le Kwa President, Wabu Jaba to Maka, Waru Toba Fa, Linto. Ota Maile Mo, Le Minister Mkunu, Laya Giani. La Pita La Wujaba to Vagiani Lari. You are going to get water. And if you don't get water, action is going to be taken. What action? Minister Senzo Mkunu is still a minister. If there was any action, it was supposed to be on him because the people of Guyane don't have water. And you went to promise them water and you did not give them water. Here in Cape Town, you came here and established anti-gang unit. You said you are going to fight gangsterism here in Cape Town. After you left, the situation became even worse. Today, there are more police stations that are found here in the Western Cape, in Cape Town, which are involved in contact crimes. Four out of ten police stations in South Africa are found here which are affected by drugs and gangsterism which you said you formed a unit uh, to deal with. You went to Mafike and called an imbizo and said the people must come and express themselves. Today, nothing has improved since you left uh, Mafike. The people of Matlosana, Tsuaying, Ratlo, Mafike, Madibe and others do not have water, do not have dignified sanitation, and do not have roads, clinics, and clean parks. But because you make promises and fic fiction in your mind, these people are imagining their daily struggles. Mr. President, what is even more concerning is that even your seventh administration is characterized by fiction, supported by prepaid mainstream media, you continue with promises that you do not follow up on. Just recently, you went to the people of Karieha in Nelson Mandela Bay, Metropolitan Municipality, and promised them temporary houses in 30 days after they suffered recent floods. These people are still waiting for, 30, for houses. 30 days has gone and passed. Until we clarify the roles and intentions we will never support this budget vote one on the presidency because it is a waste of government resources. A lot of money is being spent on useless things instead of redirecting those resources into the projects that are beneficial to the people of South Africa. We don't understand why did you take intelligence and put it in your office instead of going to take the water crisis project of Hamans Kral and make it a presidential responsibility and deliver water. Let that water crisis sit in the office of the president if you mean it. We don't have a crisis of intelligence. That thing is imagination. The crisis is water in Guyane. Why is water not in the office of the president? Because that's what we are faced with. Why is crime not in the office of the president? You have something called uh, evaluation and monitoring, which can monitor itself. How can it monitor other ministries? It has got no capacity to monitor itself. So we are making a call that instead of having these useless departments in your office, bring police in your office because crime is a serious issue in South Africa. Children are being killed. Women are being raped. Those are matters that the president should be occupied with and be worried about. Not this thing of wanting to be with your faction in your office, even when it is not helpful uh, to you. Let's take serious responsibilities into the office of the president. Let us reduce the cabinet, and do away with deputy ministers. What you did to Honorable Sitesi Galal is painful, that thing. 
when you see Sita sitting down on a chair and that white man of a minister sitting next to him but we fall instead of just removing Sita and closing that deputy ministry you humiliate him in a manner you have done deputy ministers do not have a role to play they are unnecessary we put a lot of money in the offices of deputy ministers who are not even known by anyone they walk around with bodyguards and people start asking themselves as to who is this one now with bodyguards so we can save a lot of money by reducing cabinet by removing uh, deputy ministers president Naluena Reatompana Ibile Rinda Pleke T Naluena Refitaria go each other's house Reakamautu. We don't need cabinet to make to, we don't need parliament to make an appointment. When we want to see each other, we have done so before. And I criticize you even when it is just the two of us. I'm not criticizing you here because I, I see this mem honorable members of parliament. We will continue to engage each other robustly. You asked me a question and said, where were you? It was biologically impossible for me to be there. So don't question me. Go and question my mother and my father why I was not there. But when the time came, I showed up. And when the time came, I never sold out. When the time came, I was never a collaborator. I came at an early age and nothing will remove me. At times were there to silence me with the story of being disrespectful. I'm not disrespectful. I engage robustly. Musho in less than two years. Awe Musho Dinonyan Awe Honourable Members, order.